Hello everyone, I'm the director of Super Smash Brothers, Masahiro Sakurai of Soar Limited. Yes, I'm still alive. I'm here at the Namco Bandai Studios in their Mirai Kenkyujo building, where we're developing Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and Nintendo 3DS. This is where I come to work every day, and from here, I'd like to share some information about our new Smash Brothers games. Please keep in mind though, that the games are still under development, so anything in the game footage you're about to see could change. First off, let me share some important information when we plan to release the games. The Nintendo 3DS version will be released this summer, with the Wii U version targeted for release this upcoming winter. Yes, the 3DS version is coming out first. These titles are packed with content, so we need time to do them justice. Thank you all for your patience. This may be a bit too technical for some, but please, let me just get this out. The Nintendo 3DS version is going to essentially run at 60 frames per second, and it will all be in stereoscopic 3D. I imagine many of you understand that for a game the scale of Smash Brothers, this is quite a feat. We've made the engine very efficient. Some of the assist trophies and Pokémon will move at 30 frames per second, but the fighters will all move smoothly, so gameplay shouldn't be affected. As we've said before, the 3DS version and the Wii U version will have the same roster, so all the characters on the website will appear on both systems. That said, the stages you play on will be very different between versions. Most of the stages we've introduced so far will be playable on one console or the other, so please be aware of that. As for stages that appear on both the 3DS and Wii U, such as the series staple Battlefield, the designs will differ depending on the system. Additionally, in the 3DS version, each stage will have two songs tied to it. You may remember there were some stages like this in Super Smash Bros. Melee. For the Wii U version, you can go into My Music to find a treasure trove of songs from past Smash Bros. games. We had this feature in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. And of course, there are going to be elements that link the 3DS and Wii U versions, but I'll tell you about those at a later date. Now let's take a look at some stages.
bet these stages look familiar. They've appeared in previous titles, and now we're bringing them back. Obviously, each system will have different past stages. This is a Mega Man stage called Wily Castle. Let me tell you about the Yellow Devil found here. In the background, you can see all of Dr. Wily's castle from Mega Man 2. And then something comes flying out. It's the Yellow Devil. As its body assembles, it obstructs the fighters. The Yellow Devil attacks the fighters, but they can also counterattack. So basically, the only vulnerable spot is its eye. And then, if you manage to defeat the thing, there's a big explosion. This explosion will become an attack for the player who gets the last hit on the eye, so try to snare as many enemies as you can. In multiplayer, it becomes a competition to see who can take down the Yellow Devil. Do you go directly for damage? Do you try to steal the final strike? Or do you perhaps target the fighters who have targeted the Yellow Devil? There are plenty of possible strategies. Boss characters make appearances in other stages, not just this one. Now let's look at how online play will work. The Wii U version will have online multiplayer as Brawl did. You'll have the option to play only with friends or with anyone online. But the 3DS version isn't going to be overshadowed. It's going to have online multiplayer as well. Of course, if your connection isn't smooth, you won't be able to play comfortably. So I hope you'll find a way to connect at a fast access point to get ready for online. For optimal results on the Wii U version, I recommend using a wired connection. It's naturally more stable than wireless. In Super Smash Bros. Brawl, when you played online anonymously, players could freely choose stages and we tried to make it so they could customize their matches however they wanted. Unfortunately, it's fair to say this resulted in a number of problems. Of course, at the time there were limits to what we could do online, and now we can do a lot more. For our upcoming games, we're giving the player even more choices. When you're not playing with friends, you'll be able to enter one of two modes, modes we're calling for fun and for glory. When you play in for fun mode, your stage will be picked randomly from all stages except final destination, and all items will have a chance of appearing. The only data that will be recorded will be the number of your victories. In For Glory mode, the only stage available will be Final Destination. There are no platforms or elevated areas on this stage. It's perfectly flat. There will also be no items. The results of your matches, including your defeats, will all be recorded while you're in For Glory mode. For fun, For Glory. I hope you enjoy both modes. Oh, and of course, when you play with your friends, you can set the rules to whatever you feel like. You can play stock battles or matches with no time limit on whatever stages you want. The type of player who will frequent the Four Glory Lobby probably spent a lot of time on Final Destination in previous titles. But since there are tons of stages and musical pieces in the game, I'd like that player to get a chance to experience all that Super Smash Bros. has to offer. So please, take a look at this. Almost all the stages now have a Final Destination form. Now the Four Glory Lobby has plenty of variety as well. Anonymous online matches are no more. Instead, Names linked to players' Nintendo Network IDs will appear. 
There will be a code of conduct in place, just like in Miiverse, to keep things pleasant. Furthermore, we're currently talking about measures to cut down on players starting a match and then not playing, players who relentlessly target a single opponent, players who repeatedly self-destruct, players intentionally dropping out too much or dropping out for technical reasons, and other abuses of the system. These measures may include banning such players from online play for a time, and the more they abuse their fellow players, the longer their bans will be. Please be aware, there will be penalties for baselessly reporting players as well. I hope we can all work toward creating an online environment where everyone can enjoy themselves. There's one more area where players will be able to enjoy themselves online, scoring competitions. However, a simple ranking system that shows where you rank among hundreds of thousands of other players would be too broad and not much fun. So we're not going to do rankings or anything from online battles. What we can do is grab scores for clearing solo modes and things like that. That's why we've created and implemented something called Global Smash Power. This is an entirely new type of ranking system. The bigger this stat is, the stronger the player is. It indicates how your scores stack up against other players. So you'll be able to use your Global Smash Power to say, my score is better than 300,000 people worldwide. You should also know that, though there won't be rankings in online multiplayer, there will be some sort of matchmaking going on based on skill levels. Now let's take a look at some items. Assist trophies have returned to help the fighters out. These figure into all-star mode, so I'd like to put in as many as possible.
A Pokeball. Who knows what'll come out? Opening one is such fun. This time, looks like we got one of these. This is a Master Ball. Only hard to find Pokemon emerge from these. Let's try opening one up. Whoa, it's Arceus. With its heavy attacks, it can hit fighters in midair with a meteor smash and dunk. Them. Now let's see some more of the Pokemon lineup. And now let's get to what you've all been waiting for, the fighters. First of all, take a look at this. Samus' final smash still uses the zero laser, but it's a little different this time around. Did you catch it? Previously, when Samus unleashed this weapon, her power suit fell to pieces, but not anymore. It's not just her. All characters who used to change forms mid-match will no longer change. Instead, you'll be able to concentrate on a single moveset for the whole fight. Hmm? What happened to Zeratsu Samus, you say? Well, unfortunately, she's not going to participate in this iteration of Smash Brothers. Nah, I'm only kidding. In the previous title, Zero Suit Samus was designed with slightly less physical strength, so I thought we needed to find ways to toughen her up. That's why we've given her a pair of jet boots and moves to work with them. What used to be a weakness now results in this. Kicks that combine both power and speed. Next up, Zelda. Her down special attack is now a new move called Phantom Slash. Of course, summoning a phantom also works as a defensive move. Then again, you should be careful not to let your phantom get reflected back at you. Zelda's down special attack has been changed, so what happened to Sheik? Don't worry, Sheik is back. We've polished Sheik's moves and added two more special attacks, what we're calling Burst Grenade and Bouncing Fish. Burst Grenades are little bombs that blow up once you pull the pin out. Bouncing Fish is an acrobatic kick technique using the heel of the foot. Now let me speak a little about the other characters in the game. We've added a Kirby Hammer technique to his moveset. The official name of the move is Hammer Flip. Press and hold the button to let the power build up, then unleash it. Bear in mind, if you build this move up to maximum power and don't use it, you'll start taking damage, so be careful. And then for his final smash, we've added something that will slice through everything, the Ultra Sword. The Great King DDD has become much more expressive. He also throws Gordos now instead of Waddle. Being able to toss such high-powered ammo in quick succession makes him a more formidable fighter. Lucario's aura attacks have been strengthened, and now when it's in trouble, it'll do even more damage than in the previous game. However, you should be careful not to power up too much, or you'll quickly find yourself in serious trouble. We also had some player expectations we had to fulfill. 
and that means a Mega Evolution. After its Mega Evolution, Lucario's Aura attacks will always do maximum damage. For this game, Olimar can only have three Pikmin following him around. This is a bit of a painful power reduction. Or so you might think. One important change is that Olimar now plucks Pikmin in a fixed order. Red, yellow, blue. Once these guys get dispatched, next come white, then purple, and then back to red again. With their reduced numbers, you'll be able to clearly see them lined up behind you, and management becomes all the more important. Also, we've changed his recovery move to this. Yes, winged Pikmin. You'll tote the Pikmin following you and fly through the air, but the more Pikmin you have, the heavier the captain will be. We're trying to correct some of his shortcomings, but also add some weak points. For the new additions, we've cut the gliding mechanic from Pitt's repertoire. This of course represents a bit of a downgrade. In its place though, we've leveled him up in a number of areas. The power of flight is also an easy to use recovery move. His final smash has been changed to the three sacred treasures. We've made the movesets of a number of other fighters stronger too. I hope you'll check them all out. Oh wait, there's one more returning fighter I wanted to talk about. In past Smash Brothers, Yoshi moved like a dinosaur standing on two legs with a bent back. For the upcoming games, we're updating the character to be more in line with recent models. Yoshi now basically stands upright. This is quite a big change, so we've waited a bit to inform everyone. However, you should know that the change has made Yoshi even stronger. Rest assured, Yoshi will stand tall in battle. And now I'd like to talk about some of the new characters. Let me start with Rosalina. Rosalina can choose to keep her Luma with her, or send it off via her special move, the Luma Shot. Shoot out, then return. When Luma is on its own, it'll wander around the stage and the player can control its attacks while it's separated from Rosalina. Rosalina and Luma each have a different set of moves, and they can fight somewhat independently. When they're particularly far from one another, they'll be able to unleash lots of individual attacks. Now let me show you some of their moves. The side special attack called Star Bits lets Luma fire a number of projectiles. You can do this when the two are separated, with Rosalina guarding the base, so to speak. Her up special attack is called the Launch Star. This is a nice, long-distance recovery move. Her down special is called Gravitational Pull, which allows her to draw in items. It will even render enemy shots ineffective. Last but not least, her final smash, the Power Star. It combines shooting stars with a gigantic one. Next up is Little Mac. As you can see, though his body is small, he packs huge punches and can throw them quickly as well. As a boxer, his attacks basically consist of punching with both hands, so it's a bit difficult to put a diverse moveset together. That said, I think he's become an exceedingly fresh character. He's extremely strong at unleashing attacks while on the ground. He can also shrug off some attacks through sheer willpower. 
He's also got smash attacks that hit at megaton levels, so he's sure to be launching opponents left and right. Unfortunately though, his abilities in the air are extraordinarily weak. That's right, even though he's a terror on the ground, he's very vulnerable in the air, and even his attack power weakens considerably. Plus, his ability to recover is just terrible. There's one more attribute that's unique to Little Mac, his power meter. His special moves include the straight lunge, which is very strong on its own. But beyond that, connecting with attacks and even getting hit by enemies will fill Little Mac's power meter. When it's completely full, you'll become armed with a one-shot only attack, the KO uppercut. One punch, insta KO. Hmm, that felt great. So that's Little Mac, an up-close brawler that wants to stay rooted to the ground. How he fares in battle will be up to the players. The Jolt Haymaker will allow him to leap into the fray and avoid attacks. The Rising Uppercut is his recovery move. Though it doesn't have a lot of jump power, the move makes up for it with attack power. And then there's the Slip Counter a move where Mac faints like he's going to take a hit, then counterattacks his enemy. And then there's his final smash, the transformation into Giga Mac. Are these two really the same guy? Oh, also, for old school fans, we're including Wireframe Mac as one of your costume choices. This is a recreation from the 1984 arcade game, the original Punch-Out. Now let's take a quick look at some of the villagers' moves. And let's see some of Mega Man's unique moves. For the final smash, it's Mega Man's famous co-star. The Wii Fit trainers fight with healthy techniques, so let's focus on two of them, deep breathing and sun salutation. Deep breathing helps to unify the mind, so afterward, the trainer's attacks hit all the harder. The sun salutation is a projectile attack that the Wii Fit trainer can create and save for later use. I think using this energy for fighting strays a bit from the original yoga teaching, but it's a powerful attack nonetheless. Make your attack stronger with deep breathing, then finish the enemy off with a sun salutation. No other fighters have this kind of combination. You can also have fun playing as either the male or female models and switching up their palettes. Their heights and power are exactly the same, so just choose the one you like. By the way, check this out. I think you'll see some moves you've never seen before. This is one of the elements you can use to customize your game. Custom move sets. You can't use this feature while playing online with strangers. It's only active when playing online with friends or playing locally. Customizing moves can add a lot of nuance to the fighters. We'll be telling you much more about this in the future.
For the 3DS version, and only the 3DS version, we've got a big new game mode called Smash Run. Before I describe it, please have a look. Let me emphasize once more that this mode is only going to appear in the 3DS version. Smash Run is a battle game playable by up to four players where you search a dungeon-like stage for power-ups. The fighters begin on an expansive battlefield. The time limit is set to five minutes only. Within that brief time, players will explore, fight enemies, and obtain power-ups to enhance their fighters. Each type of power-up will have its own effects, and each will augment the characters with particular strengths. Then, after the five minutes are up, the powered-up fighters will proceed to a battle and fight it out. We expect this will create all kinds of interesting showdowns. It will only take a short time to bring the fight to a conclusion, and then you can quickly jump into another battle as you wish. The players will all be running side by side through the same world, but this isn't the place for them to start beating on each other. They all start under the same conditions and use their abilities to gather power-ups. Before entering the stage, you can outfit yourself with any items you have, so get prepped to maximum advantage. This preparation basically amounts to a pre-battle competition. The rules in this mode have some similarities to those found in the City Trial for the Kirby Air Ride. I created that game a while ago, so I thought I'd unearth a piece of it and use it in Smash Brothers. Though you'll notice some of the subspace army from Super Smash Brothers Brawl, most of the enemies in here are drawn from the various game series. Now these foes will be your dream co-stars. Just as an FYI, different enemies will appear randomly every time you play. By the way, I recommend using the random fighter option too. Ultimately, it's way different than a simple online match. In Smash Run, you'll find yourself battling enemy characters and human rivals both. The Super Smash Bros. series gathers the greatest Nintendo characters together in one place. There's really nothing quite like it. We'll need a little more time before we're ready for release. But rest assured, our staff members are trying their hardest to bring the best possible games to you. So please wait just a little longer. Once again, I'm Masahiro Sakurai, director of Super Smash Bros. Thank you for viewing.